everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Christ the Cornerstone Church. We welcome everybody watching on Facebook or listening on our website as well. Happy Mother's Day. Yay. Yes, Happy Mother's Day. we give God thanks and praise for all the mothers and mother-like figures in all of our lives. We give God praise for all those people in our lives. So for all of you who are mothers or have had a mother and are maybe going to be a mother, Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Uh, one correction on our announcements, I just wanted to let you know, for those of you who have been picking up our forms, uh, the best place always to check dates and such would be the church's website where the calendar is. Uh, it's correct there. We have a little typo in our uh, paperwork here related to the uh, Fellowship Kitchen Lunch that's going to be on the 19th, uh, Thursday the 19th at noon here at the Church for Fellowship. So if you want to pitch in, bring some potluck food. Enjoy all those people's fellowship. That'll be Thursday, May the 19th. So other than that, everything else is correct on here, as well as the website. So keep, keep track of everything happening here at our church. This morning, we're here to worship God, to be in God's presence, to hear from God's word, and to sing God's praise. So let's get our hearts, our minds, and our, our very being ready and willing to be in God's presence and also to be prepared for God's outpouring of his spirit. Let us pray. God, we thank you for gathering us here in this time and in this place, your holy temple. We thank you, God, for gathering us here. We thank you, God, for all those that are watching from their, wherever they are, God, wherever they're listening, Lord. We know that your presence is everywhere we are, and so we thank you for that. I ask the anointing of your Holy Spirit upon this service this day so that everything that is said, that's sung, that's preached, anything that we do, God, it brings you and you alone glory by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. If you would, please stand with us this morning. We're going to enter into praise and worship first thing this morning, as we always do, correct? You guys ready to sing this morning? We need to hear you. We need some help. We're a little sleepy. A couple of us. <laughs> All right. Are we ready, band? Two, three, four. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain firm in my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you just lift me. And I am surrounded, your love carries me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing.
your grace is indeed enough. We love you so much, God. We just want to do right. is enough. We have everything that we need here on this earth. We have everything we need because you have graciously given it to us. And as we enter into a time to remember why we do our tithes and offerings, God, I just hope and pray that everyone in this place just always remembers that everything we have comes from you, from your gracious gift. You gave us everything, God. And as we give our tithes to you this morning, God, in whatever way we do God, I just ask that you bless those tithes, bless the people who give those tithes, and you help us to give out of, not of our abundance, but out of what we don't have, God, because you gave everything to us in your son Jesus Christ. Your grace indeed is enough, and we are so, so grateful for that. Help us to be gracious to you, to others, to this church to show that grace out into this world. Bless the money that's given to the church, God. May it be used to further your kingdom, to uplift your name, to uplift and show the name of Jesus out into this dark and dreary world. Thank you so much for this beautiful church. Just keep it going, God. You have for almost 30 years and you will continue to do so, God. We thank you. We love you.
God Almighty, you are holy, God. You are the Alpha, you are the Omega, you are the beginning, you are the end. God, it is such a blessing to be a child of you because you go before us, but yet you're also behind us and you're beside us, God. You're everywhere we are before we even know we're there. Physically and spiritually speaking, God, we thank you so much, God. Lord, we come to you in prayer. And we take a few minutes of silence for us to individually speak with you, God, about what's on our mind and what we want to lay down at your feet, God, right now, because we know that you have it. And allow us this time, God, to acknowledge that. May we pray. Lord, we pray together these prayers. We pray for the people in Ukraine. We pray for Jane and her health. We pray for Deb and her pain. We pray for Joey and his You know what Joey needs, God. <laughs> God, we pray for Jane and family as their son passed last night, God. Lord, we pray for Mary who has an illness, God. We lift up all these people to you, God, to heal them, to grieve with them, to celebrate life together, God. And we thank you, Lord, for what will come of these prayers as we have that hope and faith in you, God, that you are amongst them all, Lord. God, we pray for Pastor Joyce that as she brings forth the word today, God, that it... <laughs> the words of her mouth be your words, God. The energy and emotions that bring forth, God, are of you, God. I pray for everybody that hears the message today, God, that our hearts and our minds may be open, God, that we can hear you, that you soften our hearts, God, so that we truly hear the message that you have for each and, in the, and every one of us, God, and that we have a courageous faith today, God, to take those words to take the message you have for us and put it into action, God. In your precious and glorious name we pray, amen. You ready to go geek today? Ready to dive into the Word of God? Ready to dive into that river that God has for us? You ready? It's going to get all wet. It's going to be good, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. We're going to turn to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47, this morning. Ezekiel 47. Before I, what we're going to hear about is this river that. Ezekiel had a vision of, that God gave him a vision. All the visions in the Old Testament, Ezekiel was one of the major prophets, just like Isaiah, just like Jeremiah, just like um, all the others that proclaimed that the, the Lord Jesus Christ was going to come and be our Savior and to give us a new life. And we find that life through the power and the Spirit of God. And that Spirit comes very often, and it's described very often in Scripture as a river. Just The river just comes and flows on you and in you. And last week we talked about the Jordan River, right? That was a Jordan River that was an obstacle in the way of the Israelites, but they were going to go into the promised land. 
So God opened up that river, gave them a dry pathway, and they landed in that promised land. And we also, in all of our lives, we're in this promised land right now, are we not? In the sense that we are all been saved by the grace of God and through Jesus Christ. So he did come, and his, his blood was shed on that cross, and water poured out from him. And in so doing, all of that came upon us all and washed away all of our sins and gave us new life in Christ and also gave us eternal life forevermore. That's just part of this, right? So this particular river that we're going to talk about this morning is a different river, and it's a river of healing, it says in the scripture. So let's go there now. The man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There I saw a river flowing eastward from beneath the temple's threshold. The river then passed to the right of the altar on the south side. The man brought me outside the wall through the north gateway and led me around to the eastern entrance. So far, so far we've gone north, south, east, and west, have we not? <laughs> In the Old Testament, God said he would bring his people as far as the north, south, east, and west and bring them back to his temple, bring them back to relationship with him, just to kind of give you a picture of what already is being said here in Ezekiel. Measuring as he went, he led me uh, along the river for 1,750 feet and told me to go across. At that point, the water was up to my ankles. He measured off another 1,750 feet and told me to go across again. This time, the water was up to my knees. I don't know how tall Ezekiel is, but I would be already up to my waist, to tell you the truth, if it were me going through this, literally speaking. <laughs> But needless to say, Ezekiel, it's a vision. After another 1,750 feet, it was up to my waist. Then he measured another 1,750 feet, and the river was too deep to cross without swimming. How do you like this river that flows from the temple of God so far? What does it tell us about the, the river that flows from the temple of God? This is the temple of God right here, right? Just think about the, how the, from the north, south, east, and west people come. And, the, and also the Spirit of God goes out from the north to the north, south, east, and west, right? And the river flows. And as our spiritual journey goes, and this specific church that is about spiritual enrichment and growth, we know this, that as we continue to walk in our faith, our Christian faith, our Christian walk, our journey, we go deeper and deeper and deeper. So deep, spiritually speaking, that we have to swim across. That's how deep the river of God can be when you start to understand. And if we look at the river, it's the spirit of God, which God is love. Just imagine swimming in love. What's that going to be like? You already know, don't you? I hope and pray you do, right? He told me to keep in mind what I had seen. Then he led me back along the riverbank. Suddenly, to my surprise, many trees were now growing on both sides of the river, this great big deep river. What happens when the river flows? What happens beside it? What As a river touches it, what happens on either side of those ri uh, that river? Things pop up, right? The trees grow alongside. Just think that this river of the Holy Spirit going through this church all the time, and as you step into the river of God, once you understand the power of the Holy Spirit in you, it begins to outpour into things growing in your life, right? Good things. <laughs> Good things. Trees <laughs> that are along both sides of the river. Then he said to me, this river flows east through the desert. Remember we talked about the desert? The desert is dry and dark, and, and there's no water in the desert, is there? That's why they call it a desert, right? We're thirsty in the desert, are we not? Parched, our water, we're, we're so dry because there's not a drop of rain or water in the desert. But look what happens from the river of God that flows from the temple of God. When it flows out, what happens is it flows from the desert, it goes, flows from the temple all the way into the Jordan Valley, the desert. If you've got a desert place in your life, if you've got some kind of dry place inside of you, any one of us at any given moment, guess what happens when you come into the temple and you come into God's presence which is where the temple lives and dwells, right? His temple is a permanent place, is it not? 
right? Forevermore, is it not, right? Yes. When you come into the presence of God, outflows that river, that spirit of God, that love of God flows into you. And guess what happens? Whatever's dry inside of you, suddenly you're splashing around in the Holy Spirit. (laughs) And you're feeling a lot better inside, are you not? Because now your thirst is quenched. That thirst that you have for righteousness, that thirst that you have for justice, that thirst that you have for mercy, that thirst that you have for grace, that thirst that you have for unconditional love and understanding of God all comes into that desert place. In that one scripture, that one verse, (laughs) the river flows to the Jordan Valley where it enters the Dead Sea. We talked about the Dead Sea last week, right? Nothing lives there until the river flows from the temple of God and the Holy Spirit and also that water flushes into that Dead Sea and all that saltiness that's there. Nothing can live in the Dead Sea. It was so salty that fish died there. It was too much saline in it. But when the river of God touches it, what happens to those, that Dead Sea? What do you think happens to it? It becomes alive. It comes alive. Everything that the river touches comes alive. You're going to come alive pretty soon. I know it. (laughs) The waters of this river will heal, will heal the salty waters of the Dead Sea and make it fresh and pure. Listen, when you have God, when you get into God's presence, you make a, 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 a petition of your heart. When you say to God, I'm, I feel dead inside. I don't have anything to live for. I don't, I'm so depressed. I'm so sad. Things are hopeless. You know what you do? You come into the temple, and you go into the presence of God, and by his spirit, he flows new life into you. That's a resurrection right then and there, is it not? And it goes into the Dead Sea, and also this. We become fresh and pure. Wouldn't you like to be fresh and pure? You feel that way after a good shower, right? You feel like, oh, wow, funny, especially if you're all grungy and dirty, right? Remember when Jesus washed the disciples' feet? He made them fresh and pure, did he not? Through water, through water baptism, washing off the dirty parts. Even happened to the Dead Sea. Uh, Everything, listen, everything that touches the water of this river, what river? The river of God, the river of God. Anyone, anything that touches that river will live. How do you think about that? Remember when that woman was bleeding? Who did she touch? Jesus. The river of life flowed out of him. It was welled up inside of him because the Holy Spirit indwelled him. The man was filled with the Holy Spirit. When he was baptized in the Jordan River, the Holy Spirit descended upon him, and within him came out living water. And healing happened, did it not? Just by touching the hem of his garment. Do you understand that you can be healed by coming into God's presence? Do you understand that? Mentally, physically, emotionally, and especially spiritually, which matters the most, right? Because when your spirit is cleansed, when your spirit runs you and guides you and directs you and you're full of the spirit, suddenly you're fresh and pure. Suddenly you're healed. Suddenly you're different. You're just like Jesus because of the spirit being within you. And healing comes out of where? Now, you, because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Am I jumping too far ahead? Is it too deep for you? (laughs) Yeah, going swimming. Fishermen will stand along the shores of the Dead Sea, fishing all the way from Engendi to Ed Eglum. The shores will be covered with nets drying in the sun. Remember when Jesus said, put out the nets, put them out deeper, right? Every time he walked around those disciples, they couldn't, they couldn't stop catching fish, could they? Because the river of life was within him. Every time they couldn't catch something, these fishermen that were inadequate and incompetent, they couldn't catch any fish. <laughs> Jesus showed him, go over there, go where it's deeper, throw your net out over there. And his power caused those fish to be there, even in the Dead Sea even in your life, that things might seem not to be working out for you. When you cast your net, when you say to Jesus, help me, help this situation in my life, bring me some abundance of whatever it is that you need. And you call on him, and guess what happens? All kinds of fish comes at you. That's a literal thing. 
No, that's a spiritual thing. <laughs> you understanding what I'm saying? All right. Very good. Fish will abound, abound. I love that word. Don't you want to abound in something? Bind? I don't know the word. Abound. <laughs> to be abundant. Don't you want abundant life? How do we get it? John 10.10. 10. I came to give them life and give it in abundance. Do you see the correlation between the Old Testament and Ezekiel preconceiving Jesus Christ, foreshadowing him as the one who gives us eternal life and life in abundance, all kinds of good life? Doesn't that make you a happy Christian? <laughs> okay. Verse 12, all kinds of fruit trees will grow along both sides of the river. The, then the leaves of the trees will never turn brown and, and ever fall dead. When you're alongside, when you're alongside that river of Christ, which is really what this is representative of, God's spirit, the temple of God, where God's river flows from the temple all the way out to touch lives of others. Don't you know that in all of our lives, nothing's ever going to turn brown when it's covered by and, and comes from the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit gives life, does it not? Yeah. <laughs> there will always, always, not once in a while, not sometimes. There will always be fruit on their branches. Guess who this Ezekiel and God is showing him in this vision? Who is God speaking of right now? Somebody's saying us, finally. Yes, okay. Remember when Jesus said, abide in me, I'm the vine, you're the branch, and you're going to do what? Produce fruit. You see the connection now? You see how Jesus was, when, when, we, when he was with those two from Emmaus, remember he said, I'm going to teach you all about me and all the, all the scriptures? Ezekiel was one of the scriptures I'm sure he went over. Not quite the same way I'm doing it, I'm sure, but needless to say, he was wanting to tell the people, the people that come close to this river, that come to Jesus Christ, that come into the, and have the power of the Holy Spirit and put into them, they become a river of blessing. That produces fruit, fruit that will last how long? Forever, always. You're always going to be producing fruit when you're abiding in the, in G, with Jesus, right? When you're abiding with him, when you're connected to him. When the spirit inside of you that compels you to do something good and to love somebody else and to serve or whatever it might be, that's you producing fruit. When you tell somebody about the wonderful abundance of having a loving God, that loves you no matter what through every life circumstance and quenches every one of your thirst physically and emotionally and spiritually, guess what happens? You produce fruit hopefully in them because you're a tree by the river, by the river. Moving on. <laughs> Here's how and why. I'm going to read it again. I like that line. All kinds of fruit will grow along both sides of the river. The leaves of these trees will never turn brown and fall, and there will always be fruit on their branches. There will be a new crop every month without fail, for they are watered by the river flowing from the temple. The fruit will be food and leaves for healing. So what are we doing if we're, we're the people in the story, right? Do you understand that we become the people in the story? Because the water is, is a vision of when people, when the Holy Spirit, yes, is going to move out of the temple. Solomon had a, had a basin in that temple, by the way, that they used to cleanse things. So this is, this is a literal temple that, that Ezekiel actually could see, but he saw a future vision. See, the water that, that Solomon had in his temple when he built this temple, the people used to come to in Jerusalem, it had a huge basin. It was actually uh, 14 feet in diameter, <laughs> slightly wider than me, and <laughs> seven feet high, much taller than me. That's how big it was, and it was for the purpose of cleansing. But here's the thing about that water. It was, it was static. It was permanent. It was only used for one thing. And there it was. It didn't flow. It didn't flow. But what Ezekiel is describing, that God is describing to him, that's his vision that he's seeing, that the river of God would come from the temple and outpour this river of water that would then 
move out and bless all the people, and it would be used for food and for healing. Food meaning spiritual food, not, not just bread, not just pizza, not just, you know, the things that we like to eat. Spiritual food and for healing. Do you see how important God sees healing in these scriptures? Hmm. So, this is a vision of the river flowing from the temple. It was for a future time. It wasn't, when, it wasn't literally a temple that had water flowing from it, although that's what God said it would do. Let's turn to John 7, and I'll show you where it connects. In John chapter 7, verse 37. On the last day, the climax of the fe festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowd, If you are thirsty, come to me. If you believe in me, and just come and drink. For the scriptures declare that rivers of living water will flow from out from within. This living water that we described earlier, right, came from the threshold of the temple, right? God's temple. Now where is it going to come out of? <laughs> and to whom? Us. 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 Next sentence, though. Here's what it says. When he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who would be given to everyone. Say everyone. Not me. Everyone. <laughs> including you. The Spirit will be given to everyone believing in him. Who's the temple? Who's the physical temple now that we're, that, Je that we're seeing? Jesus, right? He's the temple of God, the personification of God. In his, in his flesh, in his body was the temple of God, right? That living water was in him. You can read John 4 and you see how he told the Samaritan woman about this living water, right? You see, I mean, you can find it all over the scriptures. In Zechariah 14, it says, On that day, life-giving water will flow from Jerusalem, from the east to the west, flowing continuously. What was that day? The day that Jesus died and the day that he also poured out the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not the only one that's excited about this. John 4, 13, water I give brings eternal life. Oh, I'm going to go back to the last phrase. I was over here. When he was said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who will be given to everyone believing him. But the spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. See, the spirit couldn't be released until he died and was resurrected, right? He promised that in the book of John as well, that when he died, he would then send the Holy Spirit, right? And he told those disciples to go to Galilee and wait for him. And in the book of Acts, we know what happens there, right? <laughs> the Holy Spirit came, big time. Acts chapter 2, if you want to read more about that. But here's the important aspect of that. When the Holy Spirit came at that time, where did it go? It filled the people who now became living temples just like Jesus was and still is. So who now are the living temples of God? Say, I am. That's, those are powerful words, I am. I am the living temple of God. I have living water flowing out from me. And it sometimes comes out with what you think is hot air, but it's really living water <laughs> to feed you, to heal you. That's the word of God. The word of God, because Jesus was the word, right? You see how it's all connected? Ooh. <laughs> in John 7, this is actually a fulfillment of the prophecy from Isaiah. In Isaiah 12, 3, it says, With joy I drink from the fountain of salvation. See, this, this living water thing that Jesus was part of the festival of shelters, that was water. They kept praying for water, for water, for water all the time, the Jewish people. They needed water to, for their crops and for all. They wanted rain and they wanted it in the desert and all the things that they wanted. But they also were crying out for the waters of salvation because they had heard in the Old Testament that there'd be water of salvation. And guess who stands up and says, oh, if you want the water of salvation, if you want real joy that's going to spring up inside of you all the time and gives you salvation for all eternity, come to me and I will give you living water. 
And it's going to flow when? On and off when you turn on the faucet. <laughs> and as it flows continuously in us and through us, what happens when we, when we have that living water in us and we drink of Christ and the Holy Spirit fills us up to overflowing, we become a fountain. Water, water, water flowing out of us, right? <laughs> and every time we sprinkle that water on people, when we give them a hug, when we hold them, when we pray with them, when, when, we, when we speak to them words of comfort, words of encouragement, the words of, of, the, of the words of God and the scriptures, and we tell them the connection between the Old and the New Testament, how it came alive in Christ, and it's still the living word, because guess what? Even today, you can have living water inside of you. And maybe some of you don't know you have that living water inside of you. But in order to have it, you have to believe in Jesus Christ, first and foremost, that he's the son of God, that he died for your sins, and he also rose from the dead. And he's going to come again. But in the meantime, we're going to be Christ on earth, are we not? He, he, in his infinite wisdom, for whatever reason, God chose to use human beings like us to be filled with that same living water and pour that water out into other people's lives. And we know this, salt water and, and dirty water doesn't mix with pure crystal water, does it? That's the human part of us that has to get out of the way. When we obey the Holy Spirit and whatever God wants, and we obey the commands of Jesus to love one another and to teach people all about him and his power and of his saving grace and so on and so forth, that's when we're pure and fresh and we bring life to people, new life for them, new hope for them. We heal their hearts, minds, and souls, do we not, through those, that living water, Jesus Christ. <sighs> So, as it said in the scriptures in Ezekiel, everything that that water touched lived. So, if you've got a dead plant at home, for example, touch it with the healing touch of God. If you've got something in your life that seems dead to you, go to Jesus and touch him, receive him, ask the Holy Spirit to just continue to flow in and through you all the time. And whatever you touch will what? Live. We're here to bring life. That's why God said, do not commit murder, right? We're here to bring life, are we not? But even we can say words that can crush a person's heart and soul, can't we? Our very words can sometimes just be awful to people, can they not? We've all been, we've all been treated to that, that kind of treatment sometimes, have we not? But not us. Not those of us that have the living spirit of God in us, right? We only say good and pure things, right? Uh-oh. I didn't get a yes. Yes. I am the living temple of God. I only say pure and fresh things to people. Now, don't be fresh. Oh, not that kind of fresh, right? I hope you begin to understand you believed in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit entered into you. And guess what happens? Maybe it starts at your ankles, <laughs> right? Your, your new walk with Christ. You don't quite understand how to walk in the fullness of that. And then before you know it, it's up to your knees. That spirit of God is you're starting to develop spiritually, right? Spiritual growth. Then it's up to your waist. And eventually, you're so deep in the spirit of God, the love of God, and, and you've grown so much that all you can do is swim in that beautiful fountain of living water that refreshes others, restores your soul, restores your heart, but more importantly, feeds and heals others. That's why churches exist. So this is a precursor of why God wanted a church built on him, the rock. Remember when Moses whacked the rock with the stick and what poured out? Water. And yes, Jesus was on the tree. Water poured out of him. That's how his spirit poured out. That's how his water, the living water that's in all of us, poured out on us. 
So now what do we do with that? What do we do with that, church? The reason we're here is to give you new life, is to give you hope, and to understand beyond having, you know, believing in Jesus, is understanding that Jesus lives in you through the Holy Spirit. That makes you powerful. That makes you wonderful. That makes you a healer. That makes you someone who gives life to others, people that feel dead inside. We're to lift them up. We're to give them encouragement. We're to tell them about the eternal life that can come in Jesus Christ, and we're here to help them through situations, are we not? We're here to part that Jordan River for some people and help them into the promised land that we call eternal life. So now do you want to know what you need to do with your life? Just, just sprinkle love everywhere. Sprinkle. <laughs> North, south, east, and west. Do not people need more love? Does this world not need more love? Or, or things are, people are thirsty for something and so many things, and they're finding it in so many other things that are not of God, right? And they're destroying their lives, are they not, for the things that they're drinking, the things that they're eating, the things that they're doing, right? We're not here to condemn them. We're here to say, let me show you a different life. Let me show you a different way. Let me show you what real joy is like regardless of my circumstances. I can be at peace no matter what because I have living water in me and I'm never thirsty. Your responsibility is to feed and to heal the word of God. The word of God never goes out void. It always produces fruit. We're here to produce fruit of other lives brought to salvation, right? And giving them new life, right? So turn your sprinklers on, full blast, all the time. And if for some reason, if, you're, if you haven't gone deep enough, go deeper with God. Spend more time in the Word. If all you did was read the Gospels and the words of Jesus and read, I've said this a thousand times, do those things, and that's how you're going to produce fruit. But more than that, follow the Holy Spirit. Follow it. Obey it. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you to forgive somebody, do what? Tell everybody about how bad they treated you. No, you forgive them. Yeah. This river, by the way, I'm going to go to one more scripture because we haven't had enough yet. This river of life is talked about in Revelation chapter 22. And the angel showed me a pure river with the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Jesus Christ. That's where the river of life comes from. The throne of God and through Jesus Christ. Coursing down the center of the main street. On each side of the river grew a tree of life. Bearing 12 crops of fruit. With each crop for every month. The leaves were used for medicine to heal the world. If we want to heal the world, we've got to come to the throne of God. We've got to go to the mercy seat, ask for God's forgiveness when we don't obey. We've also got to go bring people to the Lamb of God who takes away all the sins of all the world. We've got to, and we've got to pour out the Holy Spirit upon people by asking God to pour the Spirit out. And although it will erratically do so, we ask that all the time for a new refreshing of the Holy Spirit. And on each side of us, each side of us, trees of life are going to grow. Just look around you, and if you got somebody next to you, that's a tree of life right there, right? <laughs> and it's used as medicine to heal. We human beings, we, because right now we're still human. We're not fully divine yet. We haven't been made perfect yet. But we do have the indwelling in this crazy temple right here. Gray hair and all. <laughs> this old temple <laughs> indwells the Holy Spirit to save lives, to teach about the love of God, and to heal and restore and to 
feed people the love of God. That's not just my role. That's whose? You'll get me. Yes, those six are Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a right. That's yours. We, the church, we, the church, the holy temple of God, the holy temple of God, the living stone, are here to heal one another. If you have a relationship that needs healing, you're the healer. It's up to you to go reconcile. It's up to you to speak to them about love and mercy and grace and for you to forgive them, whether they forgive you or not. You're the healer. You have Jesus inside of you. We don't know what they have. And maybe they don't know. They haven't heard this message today. I just hope it gets spread out from you, though. The more you show the love of God and the life of Christ inside of you, with, with who you are as the person, because you are the living temple of God, right? I want to see on each side of you, your, that, those branches, those trees of life, with lots of fruit on them, of good works, of mercy, of grace, of souls that you bring to this river, to this place, to that Jesus, who is ultimately this all-time, ultimate, forevermore living temple. But isn't it good to know that you are the living temple of God? If somebody tries to tell you otherwise, what are you going to know inside of yourself? I am the living temple of God. God's spirit inside of me because of my belief in Jesus Christ proves it. And guess what I produce outside of my life? Fruit, living fruit helping people stay alive, feel alive, and live eternally. That's the fruit that we produce, is it not? So you want to be better fruit producers? Dive deep. Go to Christ first and foremost, always. If you're not quite there yet, in terms of your full understanding of all it takes is belief in him, that he's the son of God, the Messiah, that was written about in all the Old Testament as well as the New. Ask him fill you more and more. He still says today, if you're thirsty, come to me. I will give you rivers of living water that flow from within you. And if you know somebody who doesn't know Christ, just bring them that scripture and say, here, all you have to do is come and drink of him and rivers of life will flow from inside of you. Amen? Amen.
understand our responsibility to have that Holy Spirit within us, and that is to show it to other people. Everything we do, everything we say, how we act. Just help us to be that river out into the world, God, that just continues a tributary, if you will, of your river. So other people can feel you, so people can know you, so people can know your love and your love. So thank you so much for this message and for giving your church and for the love that's in this place. Be with us throughout the rest of this week. Help us to spread that sunshine and love, that river. <laughs> 